Hi, I'm Ryan Stewart, a developer of Angels for Adobe. And I want to talk about some new features that we've introduced specifically for iOS developers in the latest version of Air for Mobile 2.6. One of the first things that you'll notice is that we've vastly improved performance over the last version. So even if you make no code changes and you redeploy your iOS applications to Air for Mobile 2.6, they'll perform better and generally feel nicer on the device. We've also added support for iOS 4, which means you can deploy applications for the iPad, so nice tablet applications, as well as take advantage of the high retina display on the iPhone 4, so you can build nice high resolution applications as well. Additionally, we support multitasking now with Air Mobile 2.6, so your Flash applications can run in the background the same way that any other iOS application does right now on the devices. We've also added support for more native features, especially around microphone and camera. So now I want to take you through some of those features specifically and show you the code and how you can access these new features in Air for Mobile 2.6. One of the first ones we've got is the ability to now do video camera with the camera UI class. So in the original iPhone packager that we had, you could access the camera on the iPhone, but you couldn't access the video screen. Now, using the same API, you can access the video and save it to the, to the phone's hard drive so you can now manipulate it or kind of tweak it in Flash if you want to. Let's take a look at the code for that. So here we have uh, camera UI, and it's basically the same class you would use taking static photos. So you check to see if it's supported build a new camera UI instance, and then you set the set, when you call the launch method, you set the media type to video, and that will prompt you for the native iPhone video screen as opposed to the iPhone camera screen. So we can see this working on the phone real quick. Load up my uh, video application, and when we click this button, it'll go ahead and load the camera video, so I can go ahead and click here, take a video, and then when I save that, or when I end it, you want to use, go ahead and click use that, it will go ahead and save that to the phone hard drive, and I'll get a reference to that file that I can use later on. One of the other APIs that we offered is one that allows you to actually go to the library of photos on the phone, and then grab those and bring those into your application. So using a class called Camera Roll, you can get access to all the photos that are on the iPhone right now, or in the iPhone library. So here's the code, we just do the same thing. If camera roll supports browse for image, we're gonna browse for images, then we can call this browse for image method and add an event listener that will fire off when we've selected an object here. And I've got a basic application that will let me tweak a photo, add some filters to it, and kind of change the way it looks. So let me go ahead and look at the camera real quick. And here I can go ahead and select a photo. And we've got a photo of my daughter there that I'll choose. And then using flash transformations, I can go ahead and do a negative version, I can do a sepia version, or I can do a grayscale version here so we can tweak the way the photo looks. And it's grabbing that actual bitmap data from the library, so I have my own copy here on the application that I can use. The last one that I want to show you is the microphone. You can now take advantage of the microphone in iOS 4, and one of the great things about the microphone API is that it allows you to grab the raw sound data so you can kind of do whatever you want with it. I've got a very basic example here that I'll show. We're going to just record my voice. So I'm using a library by Tebow, the Flash Player product manager, to do this. So it's a little bit simpler than it would be if you use the raw code. But you can go grab his library uh, off, of the, off of his website at biteArray.org. So I've got an encoder here. I'm going to encode it into WAV format. I've got a recorder. And I'm going to add a couple of event listeners for when I start the recording and then when I end the recording. And I basically got a microphone button that I'll just push. It'll allow me to record my voice. And then when I push it again, it'll go ahead and give me the, uh, the sound back. So here we go. Testing, testing, here we are. Testing, testing, testing. And then click it again. One of the things that's nice about the Flash platform is because these APIs are abstracted across all the devices that we support, and this is a fairly basic application, I can take this exact same code and run it on my Android phone. So let me go ahead and load. I've got my Android Nexus One here. So, so it's the same microphone, so I can click it. Hello, 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 testing, testing, testing. And when I click play, It'll play back that audio for me. So while you won't be able to write applications across multiple devices quite as easily as this, for basic examples in these APIs, they'll work the exact same code will work on Android or iOS. So hopefully that gives you a nice taste of some of the features that we have specifically for iOS developers in Air 2.6. For more information, you can visit the Adobe Air for Mobile Developer Center, where you can find articles and content on how to build both mobile applications for Android and for iOS.